Hi folks, my name is Michael Day and welcome to the inaugural video of WeWrench. I'm very excited to be here. The goal here is to create a new and exciting automotive community filled with great info and content, and I intend to accomplish that by restoring my dream project car, a 1992 BMW E34 M5. Now before we dive into the car, I want to tell you a little bit about who I am. I was an automotive technician by trade formerly. I graduated from Universal Technical Institute in 2002 at the old Phoenix campus. I attended Audi Academy after that, Allentown, Pennsylvania, and then got a job at various Audi dealerships from 2003 to 2007. I achieved the rank of Audi Master Guild, which is one step above master. Pretty incredible. In 2005, I was an Audi Technician Challenge finalist. I took second place in the United States. 2006, I was a Twin Cup International Challenge finalist, where I took second place in the entire world. I was also a former ASE Certified Master Auto Technician. I held two certifications in medium heavy duty trucks and also in L1 advanced engine performance. I got out of the car business in 2007 and believe it or not got into the restaurant space. I quit my final dealership in 2007. I bought a Subway franchise. I built it out. Then I bought another one and then I sold those two and then I created a couple restaurant concepts on my own. All the while I got into construction and real estate and now here I am. When you do what you love and you do it for money, you kind of fly a little too close to the sun and it begins to take the fun out of it. And that's kind of what happened to me in the dealership world. And then COVID hit and with one government decree, everything that I had worked for became worthless overnight. And I learned the most valuable lesson in both business and life. Men plan, God laughs. The other lesson that I learned is that life is short. I'm 42 years old and I am tired of kicking the can down the road with my dream. So I'm taking a huge risk here, maxed out all my credit cards, tied up every dime that I had into this beautiful facility. It's like a paradise for gearheads. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. So without further ado, Let's take a look at the M5. The BMW E34 M5 is one of the rarest production BMWs in history. Only 1,678 examples made it to North America across three production years, 91, 92, and 93. Out of that 1,678, only 121 were 1992 models. So you're looking at just an extremely rare example, just as it is. In addition to that, it's painted meridius blue metallic. And according to some research that I did in the past and in the present, there are only three or four of these produced ever in a North America configuration. Worldwide, uh, I've heard there's as little as eight, there's as little as 12, I don't really know. Uh, production values by color aren't really available. So I couldn't tell you what the exact numbers are, but long story short, this car is rare. This car currently has 260,000 miles on it. I'm the second owner and I bought it in 2004 with 193,000 miles on it. And believe it or not, it was a trade-in to the Audi dealership that I was working at at the time. What's so special about this car is that it was built an entirely separate factory and assembly line from the rest of the 5 Series, and it's the last M car that was built by hand. I already have known all this, and I couldn't believe that my dream car had just rolled into the shop like that. I had never even laid eyes on an E34 M5 before seeing this one, so I absolutely had to have it. I remember taking it out for a test drive and, uh, you know, just knowing that it needed everything, but being in a little disbelief that everything inside worked and that the car was pretty tight. The previous owner had gotten a $14,000 repair estimate for everything that was wrong with it, and he decided to trade it in and get an A6 instead. So after going through it, I opened up the glove box and I found all these gems, and that's the sign that the previous owner was as passionate as I am. Train. This is a 3.6 liter 
inline six engine. It's rated at 310 horsepower and 266 pound feet of torque. This engine is actually based off of the engine from the 535i, the 3.5 liter inline six. Slightly modified, it has the ubiquitous individual throttle bodies per cylinder, which was actually very rare on production cars of this era. It's pretty high strung power plane. I think it red lines at uh, 7,200 RPMs. And uh, other than that, there's like, there's some specific M5 parts on here that are not shared with the other vehicles. And drivability wise, the car is, it's got some manners. To be honest, it's a little lacking in low end torque, but just like many BMWs from this era, as soon as it gets into the mid range, it really starts to pick up and pack a punch. And uh, it pulls very, very hard all the way to red line. So I like the performance of it. I have had the engine out of this car before. Soon after I acquired it, it was leaking oil so badly that something had to be done. So I took the engine out of it, I resealed it. I didn't do any performance work, I didn't do any tuning work. The only thing that I did was, like I said, change all the seals, head gasket, etc. I put in an aluminum flywheel from JB Racing and to tell you the truth, it was a really big mistake because now the car has a very, very lumpy idle. And uh, I like cars with smooth idles. Apparently these cars didn't idle well from the factory, but I'm pretty sure that if I put the dual mass flywheel back in that it will smooth it out. So outside of that, then I had another mishap in 2007. I just started the car up one morning and I think that the timing chain let loose or a tensioner let loose or something and it actually roasted all the intake valves right in the driveway, lost compression. So I didn't take the engine out at that point in time. I actually pulled the cylinder head with the engine still in the car and I changed all the timing chain components. I changed the, the crank sprocket the tensioner, all the uh, the rails that the chain rides on, the chain itself. I rebuilt the head, uh, not fully, I just changed the intake valves obviously, lapped them all up and put it back together and it ran pretty much better than it ever has, believe it or not. This time though, the entire engine's getting rebuilt. I'm not going to leave a single stone unturned. So guys, at this point in time, I wanna do a quick walk around of the vehicle with you, just to show you some basics, show you what the car has been through, what it's gonna need. It's basically gonna need everything, to tell you the truth. I am doing a bolt-by-bolt -bolt restoration, so uh, I don't think I'm gonna leave any stone unturned here, but let's start in the front. We have some clear coat failing on the bumper here. Road rash. The car has 260 plus thousand miles, by the way. I don't think I mentioned that yet. But uh, we have the typical road rash from, you know, that type of highway mileage. Kidney grills dented in a little bit. We have some cracked bumper covered in pollen. Pretty disgusting. I haven't washed this car in a really long time. I'm pretty ashamed of it. Rounding the corner here, you're just going to see more of the same pretty much. Failing clear coat, we're gonna to need to do some body work. We're gonna do new glass. The windshield wiper arm is actually bashing against the hood. You can see that right there. Very typical problem on, uh, on E34s, that happens. Some kind of wear in the mechanism. You can see a little bit better here. Yep, there we go. So that's definitely gotta be repaired. The moldings, the moldings have just melted off due to the sun. The sun warps them, they start to twist, and they just all popped off. When we get to the other side, you'll see that very process in progress. We have the typical E34 rust points there. We have rust at the bottom of the doors, that's gonna be fun. Uh, the jack points are completely gone on this car. Very unsafe to lift it. Have to put the lift arms under the subframe. And moving more towards the rear. Gonna have some body work that needs to be done on the doors. More rust. <laughs> Missing molding there. I actually have that molding. I don't know what happened to it. I think one of the clips failed and it just popped out and I got tired of it. We have some rust along the fender. That's gonna need to be fixed. 
rear bumper's not in bad shape. The deck lid's in good shape outside of the failing clear coat. We have some more failing clear coat here. The roof looks pretty good, bodywork wise, not paint wise. Rear bumper's not in bad shape. I'm gonna be able to make use of it. Stock exhaust is gone. I did a Super Sprint exhaust two years ago. That we're definitely gonna keep. I'm just hoping I could plug up the exhaust leaks. It whines like a banjo. This is some bad rust right here. This is all gonna, this, this is just cancer. And you can see it's creeping through the wheel well. So it's gonna be really interesting to see what happens when I open all this up. Some kind of truck did that a long time ago. That's gotta be fixed. And this is what I was talking about with the moldings. The sun is just beating on them. They warp and then just, they come off. Same thing with the moldings on the bottom of the doors. So exterior wise, we gotta do everything. We have pretty throwing star wheels though. These are not the stock wheels, by the way. Uh, this car came with the turbine wheels. And then I had, uh, <clears throat> when I purchased it, it had BBS RS212 three pieces, 17 inches on it. And I scored these throwing stars. These are my favorite BMW wheels of all time. It's kind of like a tie between these and the M parallels. Uh, but I just, I, I love the look of these wheels. It's period correct. Definitely sets the car apart from anything else on the road. As far as exterior goes, that is pretty much it. Oh, a little sticky. Sticky. Hmm. Looks good. Now let's talk about the interior. This car came stock with a silver gray leather slash color scheme. And I am extremely particular about the interiors of my cars. I love black, so I converted it to all black. I got these awesome door cards out of a later 540i because the ones that came stock in this car were pretty much delaminating. It's a very big problem that E34s had apparently. Uh, I put wood trim in it. Wood trim did not come on 91 and 92 M5s, only on the 93 US spec. And it wasn't burl wood, it was actually bird's eye maple. So this interior is a little unique. I got some really great black heated sports seats from some friends over in Staten Island. They're in great shape. They're a little crispy, they're a little squeaky. So I gotta do some work on them. Um, so the interior is pretty well sorted. Those cheap Alcantara shift surrounds and e-brake boots, those are those have definitely got to go. The steering wheel is extremely worn. That's that's 260,000 miles of sun and just all of it. So we're going to get that redone. As far as interior goes, I don't know. I, I don't know how much there is to do to tell you the truth. If something's worn, I'm gonna change it. Um, you know, but it's outside of a good cleaning, it's all in really good shape. That's an anthracite carpet that I put in. It's gotta be cleaned, definitely. You know, these door panels, you know, they, they need a good cleaning. Here's an interesting thing. The door brake is actually broken. I had to detach that because the door wouldn't open. So that's gonna have to be repaired, obviously. And let's see what else I did. Uh, I did an Alcantara headliner in here myself, black Alcantara. That's a bad shot. Looks pretty good. Here's a better shot of the headliner. Did that, did the sunroof cover. Rear seats, uh, these definitely need to be redone the seat bottom, the seat back, door panels, nice shape I would say. I also did the rear parcel shelf in black Alcantara as well as the C-pillar 
and B pillar trims, and A pillar trims too. Here's a view from the passenger side. It's, it's pretty cozy in here. It's pretty, it's pretty well done. And that's good because it makes the restoration list a lot shorter. Everything just needs to be cleaned, updated, tightened up. Very excited. Also, I am missing the entire glove box door on the passenger side. When I got the car running again two years ago, I actually had to tear it off of there to get into it. I don't really remember what, oh, it wouldn't open. That's what it was. So uh, I just manhandled it. Let's check out the trunk. stuff in here. Liner, trunk mat. This stuff's in this stuff's in decent shape. And this is pretty much the uh, parts and tool and chemical stash for the last 17 years. Look at that a valve cover gasket. It's nice. This, <laughs> this is actually a AC receiver dryer that I purchased. The AC does not work in this car, by the way, there's a leak. I converted it to R134A. And uh, I think the Schrader valve under the hood is what's causing the leak. But uh, if it has refrigerant in it, it actually works fairly well. Got this chemical stash here, brake clean, yeah. Every, every M5 owner, you gotta make sure you have a stash of this stuff. By the way, I don't think I mentioned this, but the self-leveling system on this car is deleted. That was one of the sort of repairs that I did two years ago. It's been the bane of my existence for like the last decade. All the problems that I've had with this vehicle where it got sidelined for six months, a year, was all SLS related. It was blowing hydro lines, mainly. So uh, in order to get it back on the road two years ago, I deleted it which is really nice. The one thing that you'll also notice that the suspension in the back of the car is a little high. That's because I put Bilstein shocks in and they sent me the wrong springs. I believe you're supposed to do 535i sport springs. And I don't know what they sent me, but whatever it is, it's wrong because the car sits like two inches higher than it should. Let's see what's in here. <laughs> Got some adhesive remover. Nice big 22 millimeter wrench. 21. This is silver gray trim. It's a nice puller. I did some suspension work. I replaced the entire front suspension uh, probably about seven years ago. That's a bender for brake lines. Let's see. We've got some wet sandpaper here. When I thought that I would be able to paint correct this, I thought wrong, obviously, because you can see how much the clear coat's failing. Black gloves, these are going to come in handy. Uh, yeah, we got some Lem Forder suspension components. I never did these uh, sway bar arms. This is nice. These are brand new. That's a, that's a brand new control arm. I don't know why I have that. Oh, this is cool. Look at this. It's a random box, random box of gaskets. This, this is part of an engine gasket set for this car. These are exhaust flange gaskets. This car has like an insane amount of O-rings to it. A lot of O-rings. And as you can see, there's a lot of them in this bag. So that's pretty awesome. This is an AC compressor. I don't even know if this thing, let's see. I don't know if this is for this car or not. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. I don't even know why I bought this. I thought maybe the compressor was bad before I converted it to 134A, I don't know. But uh, I don't know, I'm gonna hang on to this. Spare tires in really great shape. It's pretty much flawless. I think this has maybe been on the car maybe once or twice. Uh, outside of that, it's pretty much untouched. Let's see, oh, this is cool. We got another box of random, random OEM parts and gaskets. I got to catalog this stuff. That's for the, uh, that's for the oil filter housing to engine block. That's what that is. 
We got a brand new accelerator pedal. That's for the engine oil return in the back of the cylinder head. We got some more O-rings. This is for the oil filter. This is for the valve cover. We got some hydraulic line unions there, couplings. That's like a, a rear main seal, I think. Some nuts and bolts, valve cover gaskets. Uh, that's a spring for the old style timing chain tensioner. I got some copper nuts for the exhaust flange. This is great stuff. Taking a look inside the trunk, a little bit of surface rust in here, but I'm pleasantly surprised. I'm pleasantly surprised that there is not more cancerous or corrosive rust. There's a little bit on that body plug there. Pretty easy though. It's gonna be able to be rectified pretty easy. So that's, that's promising, definitely promising. See what's in the toolkit. Uh, not bad. We got the wrenches, we got the plier, the rag. I think I'm missing the screwdriver and looks like that Allen key. This belongs somewhere else, maybe. Who knows? It's kind of a trip going through all this stuff. I think I stated earlier that if I had anything for this car, I stashed it in the trunk over 17 years. And cleaning this trunk out, seeing all this stuff, it just brings back a lot of memories and I just wanted to talk about it for a second. Many, many times that I would walk outside and see this car not running and just rusting away, you know, it, it breaks your heart. It breaks your heart when you feel so passionate about something. You know, you, you, you get a project car and then just life happens. There's nothing you can do about it. You have a vision for it, you have a dream, you have a goal, and then life happens. You take on responsibility. You don't have the money, you don't have the time. You don't have the energy to do it. So I think that I'm just seeing all this stuff, I'm just stacking a lot of gratitude right now because I'm very, very blessed to be able to do all this. I'm very excited and I'm even more excited to share it all. Your skills become the most valuable when you're able to give them away. So I think that as much fun as it's gonna be tearing this car down and restoring it, sharing the experience with all of you is gonna be equally as special. Time to lift up this beast. So we can take a look at what's underneath. But uh, I'm gonna warn you, it's not pretty under there. I was actually <laughs> I was actually considering not lifting it up because I had to do a really half-assed repair, rust repair on the undercarriage of this thing. Under the battery tray, I guess from battery acid leaking, the batteries venting over a lot of years, it just totally took out all the sheet metal under the battery. All right, time for this side. I gotta be really careful because the jack points are completely, completely gone. So you gotta be very strategic with where these lift plates go. I'm going under the rear dog bones in the back and in the front, I'm going under that structural body channel that runs the length of the car. It's in. Way deep in there. But it's a must. All right, I'm ready. Safety first. Always double check your lift points. Always jounce the car. Let's see. That looks good. Okay. Looks good. All right. Lift points are in. Once the wheels are off the ground, 
you give it the jounce. It's very solid. It's not slipping. So I think we're ready to go. All right, with the car up in the air, let's start from here. So externally, we have the uh, typical trash fog light from all those road miles. I never touched those, so no wonder why it's trashed. Bumper, yeah. It's got to be done. Everything's got to be done, guys. There, there's there's going to be no stone unturned with this car. So, you know, this inspection is not really so much to show you what I'm going to do and what I'm not going to do. I'm going to do it all because, uh, you know, it's a true restoration. Don't you love this screw? <laughs> I zipped that screw in there to hold the bumper on. I don't know why. I think uh, there's something wrong with the clip underneath. But anyway, let's go back to the corner. So what am I looking at here? This is uh, the alternator cooling duct and there is some oil leaking. Now from this side of the engine, I don't think that that's engine oil. That's probably power steering fluid. Uh, maybe it was from a messy fill job. Chances are we need some new plumbing, hoses and whatnot, or there's like a loose clamp or whatever. So that's gonna get all done. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely showing its age. That's the power steering pump, but uh, that also serves, there's a tandem pump attached to that, which is, uh, builds hydraulic pressure for the self-leveling system. So the power steering pump on this vehicle serves two purposes. Engine oil leak, yeah. Now, where is it coming from? That is the question. Is it coming from the front seal? I don't know. The whole pan is, the whole pan is sweating. I mean, I don't know. Who knows? It's getting everything, so who cares? This is, uh, what is that? Is that the emissions pump? No, that's, that's the AC compressor right there. We've got some oil on there too. I am going to delete, this has like a, a crude version. This has a very crude version of a secondary air system. It's like one of the earliest emission controls. Basically what this pump does is it takes atmospheric air and it pumps it into the exhaust stream at the headers to oxidize unburnt fuel on cold starts. And uh, this car had a pretty crude system. It had this air box down here with all kinds of plumbing. I got rid of that years ago. I, I think when I had the engine out in 2005, that's when I got rid of all that. So this pump does not operate. It's not connected electrically. It's just more like an idler for the belt. Um, so I, th I think I'm going to eliminate that entirely when I, when I get the chance. Uh, a lot of rust. I mean, just, you know, the car is just showing its age. It looks like we're going to need some new mounts. Definitely going to need some new mounts. So I'm taking another look at all this oil residue under here, and there's something interesting that I'm taking note of. You can see over here that it's pretty thick. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this on camera, but let's see. Let's look up here. No, it's not focusing. You see, it's kind of dry on the side of the block, but when I look all the way up in there, The oil leak, the oil's leaking. It's coming up from a high spot. It's coming, it's coming from the valve cover, which is actually really good news because that means that I did a good job <laughs> sealing this engine up when I had the head off. Yeah, it's just, it's wet all the way over here. Now, one other thing. I don't know if you could see up there. Yeah, the lighting's lousy. I really want to show you this. It's not going to matter because I'm changing it anyway. But there's a very typical leak point up there. Maybe you can see it now. You see there's oil residue on the exhaust flange, but that's coming up from a higher spot. Very hard to see on camera. 
and the, let's see, let's make our way back. I'm really hoping all those previous shots I did were not half-assed. I'm just having trouble like holding the light and holding the camera too. So I'm on a chair now, so maybe this will help. Let's see, what are we looking at here? Ooh, suspension looks decent. It's old. The whole car's old. So we can make our way back. See some body rust. Oh, look at this disaster. Oh, that is crazy. That is crazy. That's going to be fun to fix. Actually, it's going to be real fun. I, I wasn't being sarcastic. That is going to be the funnest part, fixing all the rust. That's not something that uh, I have a tremendous amount of expertise in, so I am just going to go for it. And there's some more rust there. Exhaust headers. This car has a pretty nasty exhaust leak. I don't know if it's coming from these flanges. I don't know if that joint is broke. I don't know if the headers are loose up at the head, but uh, it leaks, boy. The trans. So one other thing I forgot to mention, this car, this car does not burn oil. It does not burn coolant. It leaks oil, obviously, but you know, major mechanically, this car is in really good shape. Trans. So uh, this trans is like, this thing's got me thrown for a loop. So in this car, it has the Getrag 280 slash five. The Getrag 260 was like the bee's knees transmission, pretty much bulletproof. These, you know, it's a good trans, but parts are really hard to come by for this thing. Some of the gears are no longer available. So I don't really know what I'm gonna do, but the one thing that I could tell you is that this trans is in really good shape. It does not grind. Uh, the synchronizers are good. It's, you know, it's got the typical BMW notchiness to it. So, you know, I really wanted this to be a zero mile restoration. But uh, I don't know, we gotta see. I'm gonna open this trans up and I'm gonna take a look at it and see what it's like inside. I might reuse it, I don't know. We have to see how that goes. <clears throat> yeah, the brake line, that's part of my SLS delete and I actually had to run a new brake line to the back because uh, the brake line was corroded too, so. Trans mount, drive shaft, this beautiful super sprint exhaust. I did, uh, these are cats. I did, uh, I changed the cats. These cats are from Pace Setter, I believe. The factory cats were just gone. So uh, change the cats. That's the super sprint cat back exhaust. I know my joints are terrible. Terrible, terrible. I, I had to do this on the ground in my apartment complex. I'm ashamed to even show you that. But, uh, you know, I swore I would be transparent, so there it is. <laughs> Any work I had to do, I was in like really bad conditions on concrete without the right tools or the right equipment. So it's pretty much why it looks that way. The rear suspension on this car, uh, outside of the shocks and springs I have not touched, nothing has been replaced. <laughs> so it's gonna be interesting to see when we dive into that. Differential, this is getting torn down and rebuilt. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's diff fluid. It looks like, it looks like the front seal is, uh, is leaking. And actually, you know what's funny? It's, it's wet up above it. It's wet up above. So that could be, yeah, it could be just the drive shaft flinging it. So that's a possibility. Your suspension, more rust. More rust. And more rust. That's what the jack point should look like. I'm afraid to even, I'm afraid to even try that. I'm afraid of what's gonna happen. Rear suspension, lovely caliper. I changed those calipers. It looks like the anti-corrosion protection is not really that good. And uh, yeah, so the fuel tank has a hole in it. <laughs> I can only put like maybe 20 bucks worth in this thing uh, without it leaking all over the place. You could see the remnants. Uh, I think that that flange where the tank is kind of welded together is rusty. I don't really know, but I'm going to take it apart and uh, I'm actually going to repair it instead of replacing it. 
because these tanks are a little hard to come by. I don't want to get a used one. As you can see, just all the miles and all the road conditions have just been extremely hard on everything in this area. And yes, here we're going to come to my uh, favorite part. <laughs> Again, I contemplated uh, not showing this. But what happened was, like I mentioned, I think just years of the battery venting and acid dripping into this sheet metal pan here, it just uh, it withered away. So again, on the asphalt of my apartment complex, I took a bunch of uh, tiger hair, which is plastic body filler with uh, fiberglass in it and chicken wire and rubberized undercoating and expanding spray foam and plugged it up. Uh, you know, it worked for what it was. I, uh, I just got really tired of driving down the highway with a big hole in the bottom. So it is what it is. I'm not proud of it. I know there are going to be a lot of people who are going to watch this video like I would in the past and just need like, you know, some frame of reference for a repair that they're doing or just for educational purposes to learn about the car. I feel like I wasn't giving a good perspective earlier. So I'm just going to roll with my chair here and we're just going to take a nice video of the undercarriage just so you can see what's under here. Man, I got my work cut out for me, man. It's labor of love though, baby. I'm going to love diving into this thing. I'm just absolutely going to love it. And I'm going to do something special. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this entire powertrain out of this car in one piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the engine, the trans, the drive shaft, front subframe, rear subframe, rear differential and suspension all on the ground and then raise the body off of it for your viewing pleasure. Basically what I'm doing right now is I'm walking through the undercarriage and I'm forming a plan. In order to do what I said I intended to do, which is dropping the engine, the transmission, the entire drive line out of this car in one piece, you have to have a plan. So I'm basically going around the perimeter and I'm looking at everything that attaches the engine to the chassis. And that it can include a lot of items, plumbing, hoses, wires, etc. And, uh, you know, just as an example, you know, the radiator is fastened to the chassis and it's got flexible hoses that attach to the engine. So those are going to have to come off. Brakes, uh, you know, the brake lines attached to the calipers and those go to the body of the car. So something has to be done about that. It's going to be a big project. This engine was not meant to be taken out that way. The uh, manufacturer recommends that you pull the trans first and then you pull the engine with a cherry picker out front of the top. That's how I took it out when I did it in 2005. It wasn't that hard of a job to be honest. So, uh, you know, doing it this way, I'm definitely doing it because I want to bring you some good content. I'm not aware of anybody that has taken an entire engine and uh, drivetrain out of any 34 M5 like that. So uh, it's going to be for your viewing pleasure. It's going to be an interesting journey. Hey everybody, Mike here. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video to be informative or entertaining, please hit the like button or subscribe to the channel and we will see you in episode two.